Hello, my friends. I am so excited to wish you a Merry Christmas and to introduce you to my favorite flamingo, Flame. Now, Flame flies in for the holidays ever, every Christmas from the North Pole. And the reason why he's so special is number one, because he's so cute. But number two, he is my mental trigger to stay in joy this Christmas season because all of us can have some ups and downs around our family or friends or if you have an Uncle Bobo head or you know whoever. But just like in golf, when the threat of being down or depressed or just negative or grumpy comes upon you, you need some kind of trigger to keep you in your ideal performance state. And joy is the highest emotional vibration that there is. When you are in joy, your positive emotion can't get any higher. So I have to tell you the story behind Flame. I bought this flamingo for my sister-in-law many years ago for Christmas, and I was driving Flame home in the passenger seat of my car, and he looked just like a passenger. Well, the next thing I know, I stop at this red light and I hear this guy honking profusely right next to me. So I turned and I look at him and he's going like this, <sighs> pointing at flame. And I was feeling kind of down at the time. And I thought, oh my gosh, I had this flamingo and all I was doing was sitting here and producing joy. Next thing I know, I stop at Whole Foods. I pull into the parking lot and there was this lady with her little boy and uh, all of a sudden they see flame and they smile and they're like, so I decided to take this one step further. And I said, I wonder what would happen if I actually took flame inside the store. So I took the flamingo, I stuck him in my shopping cart and I started just shopping as if, you know, there was no big deal. And then all of a sudden, all these ladies started coming up to me and saying, I love your flamingo. I want one like it. Where did you get it? And I was like, would you like to take a picture with flame? And they were like, oh, yes. And this happened so much that I started posting flame to Facebook. And then I started doing videos with Flame. And he started making yearly appearances because he just loved coming back and getting all the attention. And through that time, I realized that I could be a joy producer. The nature of joy is that it's spontaneous, it's relational, it's something that is the fruit of connecting with someone spirit to spirit. And it happens in the moment. And I wanted to share flame with you this Christmas season because if there are any, anything that our culture and our country needs, and you need, and I need more of, it's joy. And I know you're gonna wrap those presents and buy those presents. But why not give the gift of joy to produce joy this Christmas season? And I want to share with you three heart postures to be a joy producer. The first one is to be open, to have an open heart. That means that I'm not going to be close to everybody else's reality around me, but my own. Did you, ever, did you ever meet people like all they were into was themselves? A joy producer is always open to being a blessing to someone else. So you got to be open. Number two, you have to be present. If I'm coming across somebody and I'm open, I also want to be focused on them. I want to be focused on what's right before me versus what I'm thinking about the rest of the day or what I've been thinking about the day before, but to be present. 
You know, to be a good golfer, you have to be present to your shot. You can't be thinking about score or the next shot. You have to be all in this shot. Are you all in this shot of Christmas? Open, present, and number three, willing to speak. Willing to speak a blessing or speak into a, I ought to call it a champion identity in somebody else. Open, present, willing to speak into. How often have we wanted to say something and we don't say anything and that person doesn't leave blessed? I'll give you an example. I was coming home from Florida a few weeks ago and I stopped to spend the night and I got up the next day, went into uh, downstairs for breakfast and I'm sitting there. Now I'm open and I noticed a woman sitting across from me and I really loved her sweater. I said, I really like your sweater. She goes, thanks. Her daughter walks over and her daughter is wearing a t-shirt that says warrior of God. I said, are you? And we got to talking, realized she was in the eighth grade and she was a wrestler. And so before you knew it, we were in a conversation. And before she left, I said, listen, let me tell you something. If you will be an outstanding athlete and an outstanding student, by the time the opportunity for college comes around, if you will just pursue excellence in those two areas, God can open up a door for you, many doors for you, by being in that place of excellence in both of those categories that would not have been open to you before. So I wanna encourage you to like go full force in both your academics and your athletics. And then I went out and I gave her a copy of my book because I was just feeling generous that morning. Well, the next thing I know, I get in my car, I'm driving away to come home and I get a text from her. And you know what she said? Her name's Taylor. She said, it was such a great experience meeting you. She said, you didn't know this, but I was thinking about quitting wrestling because my coach is such a Uncle Bobo head. He said, but meeting you has changed that. And then she started texting me and asking me to pray for her before each one of her matches. And I thought, isn't that something? It was such a simple thing to be open, to be call it open, present, and willing to speak into another person's life. I was at a driving range in Myrtle Beach hitting some balls recently and started talking to the guy behind me and found out he was from Raleigh, an hour away from where I live and knew one of my students. And we got to talking and realized that we had so much in common. And he was uh, transitioning from being a aspiring golf pro to pursuing his MBA, to pursuing business, going back to school. And as we were walking out to the parking lot together, I said, can I pray for you? I said, I, I know what it's like to make a transition. He said, sure. I got through praying for him. And you know what he said to me? He said, you have no idea how much that just meant to me. I really needed that. It was such a simple thing to do, just to be open, present, and willing to speak life into somebody. Just the other day, I was coming from an exercise class, and it was one of those stretching classes where the woman comes around and, you know, she presses you and helps you to go deeper into the stretch, and she had what I would call a ministry of comfort because when she went to, you know, press on my muscles, I, my body literally felt comforted. And afterwards I went up to her and I said, thank you so much for this class. I just really feel like you have a wonderful ministry of comfort. And I said, that's a, that's a special gift. And she looked at me and she said, you have no idea how much that meant to me. And you see the bottom line is, we all want to be valued. We all want to be seen. And I have an online mentor that always says, we're always making people feel something. What are you making people feel when they're around you? 
do you add value? Do you speak into their life? Do you acknowledge them? Do you, do you build them up? Are you open? Are you present? Are you willing to speak into? Now, if a little flamingo can add joy, right? Yeah. Can add joy to somebody's life with just being present. And I would say cute. What can you do? So I want to encourage you this Christmas season to be a joy producer, to be open, to be present, and to speak into the life of somebody. You'll never know the difference that it'll make. Thank you.